Hello, and welcome back to Dump Slate, a podcast about movies. My name is Felix, and I'm your host. We only have four minutes and 20 seconds, so let's get started. Today, we're talking about Sometimes I Think About Dying, directed by Rachel Lambert. The movie is starring Daisy Ridley as Fran, uh, Dave Maherge as Robert, Fran's love interest and new guy in the office, and notably, small screen time, big impact, Marcia DeBonis as Carol. You may know her as Jennifer Garner's assistant in 13 Going on 30. The film follows Fran, a depressed person who lives a boring life at a boring job, and to feel something within this mundane routine tends to daydream about dying. But when she meets Robert, the new guy in the office who replaces Carol after retiring, she struggles between finding love and her own issues. I actually heard about this film uh, earlier 2023 as it released at Sundance that year, but didn't publicly release until this year. Um, I found it on Mubi where it was like the first week I was subscribed to this new platform and instantly pressed play when I saw it. And I was so happy I did. It screams indie film with the simple scenes, focus shots and bad, bad acting besides Daisy, of course. But most importantly, being an independent film taking place in the Pacific Northwest. While the film is sad and depressing, it is overall a comedy. And while there are scenes of Fran committing suicide, you don't see the suicide happen, if that makes sense. It's artistic, it's unique, and accompanied by what sounds like Disney music each time for a little twist. It's a great example of what Jordan Peele has said in the past, that the only difference between horror and comedy is just the music. The saddest part about this movie is actually the office they work in. Holy crap. The the small talk, the annoying manager. I think Fran is actually, at the end of the day, the only sane one there for that being what she thinks about. To be honest, while the movie centers around Fran and Robert, I think it comes down to the fact that their scenes really just aren't that memorable. You get what you need out of them in terms of laugh factor, pop culture references, and moving the plot forward as a whole. But everything really is just supporting Fran, uh, who, who, who really runs this movie. Um, I don't want to discount Dave here. I really enjoyed his role, and he is obviously important to the entire film as a whole. But my favorite scene does come in the third act when Fran runs into Carol. You almost get a thriller-like aspect of the film for just a second, and the scene makes the largest impact, uh, in my opinion. I really loved the cinematography, the use of lighting and shadows and mirrors for a lot of perspective uh, feeling in certain scenes. Uh, The music was fun, but most impressively was the use of silence, especially at the beginning of the film. The fact that you can be so brought into a movie without the main character talking for the first 20 or so minutes is quite impressive. Now on to the important things. Uh, Again, all ratings are based on Letterboxd. I am actually going to make a video reference soon about how I rate and what each rating stands for. There is criteria. I take this seriously. Anyway, my rating, 3.5, which falls under a must-watch. It did skew 4 for me, but I really needed to let out my cranky critic on this one and stuck with a 3.5. Average rating, 3.6, so really in line. Um, uh, Again, a must-watch. And for my favorite Letterboxd review, we have uh, Tom, uh, who goes, Daisy Ridley fell into the trap of dating a Letterboxd patron user. Um, This is a great comment, uh, and it really hurts. Uh, (laughs) Patron users are the highest level of subscribers at Letterboxd, which I am. Tom obviously is not, because he only gave this two stars, which is criminal. Anyway, is the film stoner friendly? Absolutely. Taking place in the Pacific Northwest. Great cinematography and music. I recommend going stone to the gills, baby. Uh, But also, if you get paranoid, be careful, since it does contain heavy themes. Would you watch with your parents? Honestly, yes. Make your parents watch a movie that isn't John Wick. They might judge you for watching it. It, but enjoy it no- enough to not turn it off. Thanks for watching and cut. We're literally smoking and talking about movies.